Okay, well, I don't have anything prepared per se, but I thought what I would do is, since you guys are here, give you a little bit of an insider thought process about this. Also, if you have questions about the poster session, now's the time for Kyle and Dean and I to answer those for you. Um, do we want to start with questions in case someone has specific questions, or should I talk for a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do we need to bring our own thing to set our poster on, or is it going to be pre? The, they'll, it'll be organized, and you will bring your Yeah, uh, there'll be standards and clips there okay. um, for you to put your poster up. So we don't have to bring any of those. Just bring uh, your poster. Okay, yep. Excellent. And your poster needs to be on, on like a poster board. <coughs> on either what? foam core or um, museum board, stuff like that. Um, it should all be in the emails that have gone out to you. Um, there is a 24 by 36 uh, size limit as well for the posters. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I should have read the emails. Yeah. And I'll be sending some more information out <coughs> about um, when you'll be able to come in early to set up as well. So, so since we're, some, we're doing this new um, sort of opportunity with the prizes, I thought we could talk a little bit about that. And the goal there of the prizes is their $1,000 uh, best poster prize. In, uh, the five categories, so there's the life sciences, there's the, Kyle, do you remember all of them? Um, computational and physical sciences, sciences, the social sciences, um, and the arts. There is also professional um, education. Education, right. And I think that covers it. So that you're, you'll all be in five or in one of those categories, and there is some overlap, so you could even be considered for more than one category. And then there's also, um, the you know uh, people's choice. So you know if you happen to teach a course with 30 students, undergrads, they can come vote for you, things like that. So it's great to get folks to come participate. But actually, one of the things you want to be aware of for the poster session, the way this is working is we've recruited a lot of external folks, so folks from industry, nonprofit. And there's lots of faculty involved, but faculty are, and all these folks are coming, and you won't know who the judges are. But what you will hopefully be doing is interacting with all these folks that are at the poster session. So one thing you should be cognizant of is you want to be able to tell people in a relatively quick manner about your research, right? And the way to do that, I think at least one way to do that effectively, is you ask them one or two quick questions, right? So you can gauge where they are in terms of expertise. I mean, you could have a potential judge or just an audience member coming to your poster, and they could be an expert in your field. And so with a quick question, hopefully you can gauge how, if they are an expert, then you're going to use your poster and really dive into the details that you're really excited about that you can share with that expert. But you may also have people coming that may have some passing knowledge, or they may be a smart person, but they don't have that expertise. So you want to quickly gauge what they know, and then with that background, you want to tell them in three or five minutes you know, why your research or scholarship is so exciting and why you're so passionate about it, right? So that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking about for this because hopefully, you know, during the hour and a half during the poster session, you'll engage with 10, 15 people easily, right? So that's something to be aware of is if you end up speaking with one person for 30 minutes in your poster, you know, there's 10 to 15 judges in your category. So if you spend 30 to 40 minutes with one person, you're limiting your ability to interact with all the other judges, potentially. And you may actually, things that happen at poster sessions is there may be a group of five people listening to you, so you can try and talk to all five of those people. That's what happens at some of the scientific meetings I'm at. Sometimes you'll have five or six people, and you'll tell your story then about the science you're doing or the scholarship or the research. Um, does that make sense, everyone? Understand that, agree with it, or, or disagree? I mean, any other approaches people might imagine taking? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, Dean. Well, it's a different method, but I think you know, my goal, I'm trying to deliver a poster, is to sort of do my best to ensure that the person who leaves my poster has the ability to probably talk to someone else about my poster in some coherent way. Yeah, so that's if they can explain it right. in, in the simplest terms, if they can at least explain it, then I think I've done my job. Yeah, those are take home points. So, you know, things that I think about fo both for a poster or when I give a 10 or 15 minute talk at a meeting, one of the things I think about strategically are what are the, what's the number one point I want everyone to remember to take away, or what are the top three points? 
Sometimes I'll even have them as headings on my poster or things like that, or I'll have them as bullet points in my summary, and then you can point to them. Or hopefully you're pointing to figures that illustrate your point, right, while you're talking and things like that. Um, and I know you guys are in a broad range of disciplines, um, so it'll be different for all of you, but um, I think those are the types of things to think about. Actually, I just want to get a feel for who's represented here. So are we um, a lot of folks from the natural sciences here? How about the social sciences and humanities? College of Ed? Okay, pretty good smattering of everyone. Okay, did I miss an area? Okay, oh, the professional architecture, things like that. Anyone else I missed? Sorry. Well, I'm an administrative teacher. Oh, I'm an administrator. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, I'm excited to see those posters too. Right. So actually, I would, I think, you know, you're in a unique position. Right, I was going to ask that. Like, yeah. I mean, because obviously the way I'm presenting my poster is going to be different from someone who's there, you know, doing a research poster. Right. So we have a, a category at the poster session so that everyone's aware of this. Uh, the acronym's IPSA, it took me a while to learn what that meant. It's, um, oh, I've spaced it out now. Institutional Priorities and Strategic Alliances. So that's what the IPSA stands for. Mm -hmm. And those are GTFs on campus where, you know, your job as the GTF may relate to your research or scholarship, but it may not. And it, but we have a lot of students who do that, and I think, you know, those are great opportunities to for professional development and things like that. We want to share all those great experiences that the, those GTFs are doing with actually more administrator folks. So a lot of those judges will probably be administrators. Oh, they're not all of them. Um, and the other thing you should know is that the judges are going to be mixed. They're not all going to be experts in your field. So there will be judges who are not experts in your field. And I actually think that's a very good thing. I think you need to be able to explain why your scholarship, your research, is, is important to a non-expert. So be aware of that, okay. <laughs> There's a seat or two, guys, come on in. So one, two here, one, two over here, a couple there. So, um, so, do you guys, I mean, something we could do is, if someone's willing, I thought I'd give someone the opportunity. I know this is sort of putting folks on the spot. Does anyone want to practice with their poster? Do they want to use me as a practice judge? Who knows, I might be a judge. Someone could, you know, pretend like that is their poster, and we could do a little uh, play acting here. And you could uh, talk about it, and we could use that as an opportunity for everyone to see, you know, how we might do things, things like that. I know that's putting folks on the spot, but... That was something I thought we could do if anyone was interested. Um, I know a few folks, so I could put someone on the spot. <laughs> What's that? Um, okay, that, that was a tough one. I had a feeling I might not have any takers. Unless, Josh, are you maybe interested? I can do it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. No, I think, yeah, I think it's good. Right. I know you're a more senior grad student. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, thank you, Josh. All right. So, <clears throat> So you can use this beautiful tapestry as your poster. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> or you, or you right. can pretend like this Burning Man is your poster. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. All right. Man. So I'll come up. Um, All right. So nice Hi. to meet you. How are you? Josh. Josh. Yeah, nice to meet you. So can you tell me about your research? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm a fifth year graduate student in the Institute of Molecular Biology. I'm using whole genome sequencing to study uh, germline development in a nematode worm called C. Alpha. So what's whole so, genome sequencing? So basically what we do is we extract DNA from these worms. We chop it up into fine little bits and then basically run it through a machine that tells us, um, let's see, I was going to say the sequence, but that's not exactly very helpful, is it? Um, basically gives us the sequence of you know A's, G's, C's, and T's that make up the entirety of the genome. From that information, we can sort of put it back together um, computationally and um, really find out what's affecting these worms at the genetic level. So. And so since Josh knows me, he didn't ask what my background was, so I actually <laughs> did the Institute of Biology as well. So 
he would have asked me, oh, what's your background, things like that. So something else you guys should realize is that, um, you know, this is an opportunity to start making connections with folks you may not know, who knows, these could lead to internships, other possibilities, things like that. I mean, I this year, you know, I'm still, we're, Kyle and I and others are still developing this, so there, there may not be, you know, perfect <coughs> folks for everyone at the poster session, but that's sort of the goal, is to build this into an opportunity for you to interact with, you know, folks outside of the U of O, but also folks inside the U of O to make connections to build your, it's, if we end up spending a few more minutes, who knows, I might be talking about, oh, you know, there's a postdoctoral fellowship in a field you might be interested in, or a lab, such and such a place. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, in terms of the poster, what are the take-home points you want me to take Definitely the, the take-home points. So um, one part of it is that we're, we're using a sort of a new experimental method, and that's really sort of what I intend to push, like with my poster, and, and to show that allows us to obtain a lot more information much more quickly than we've been able to traditionally in the past. And so um, that's sort of the, the big, broad message to take home. And so the idea is to sort of point out um, not only the, the difficulty in getting to this level of understanding, but also how it relates to human health, how understanding what's going on in these worms actually affects our, our understanding of human health as well. So you imagine the technology you're developing, even though you're using a model system, mm -hmm. nematodes, you could take this technology and apply it directly to the human tissues or samples? Absolutely. Like Absolutely. So yeah. most of what I found, the, you know, most of the genes that are uh, required for life in these worms are also required in humans. Um, and they're, they're changed to some degree between the worms and humans, but most of the portions of them are actually exactly the same in function, almost identically. So the more we can understand at that level in the worms, the more we can understand about humans. So. Yeah, I'm sold, I like that. Mm -hmm. So any questions, thoughts about how this works? I thought, you know, modeling this might be useful for folks who haven't been to poster sessions before. Um, I mean, some of you are probably experts as well and things like that. So we have a broad range here, but Anything you know? Anything else that could be really helpful for you guys? You know, you guys are taking time out of your day to get some advice and feedback. Is there specific things you know that can be for you exactly? Yeah. Yeah, for me exactly. Um, <laughs> so, if I'm an administrative GTF, how do you want me? Do you want me to present like how what my position is effective for the career center? I mean, I'm the Peace Corps representative in the career center. Mm -hmm. So, do you want me to just discuss like why I'm a, why it's an essential position? I think twofold. So I would I would argue why why having a GTF helping with that is is important for you know communicating across the campus and and the opportunities that you're providing across the campus. Okay. But then also I, you would want to talk about why that opportunity has been really useful for you and is helping you with your own okay. career. So, so I would say both. Okay. And I would probably lead with the broad uh -huh. and then I would go to the specific. Okay. So that good question. And I would actually argue that that isn't specific just to you know the I, IPSA um, presenters. I would uh, I would think you want, might want to you know hit people with the big take home broad picture point first and then you can build on that. Yeah. I have two questions. Sure. First, uh, the, this forum has a theme on all right? Community? Or? It has engagement, community, community connections, and creativity. And creativity. It's very broad. Okay. So, are we uh, encouraged? Um, would you encourage people to tie their presentation onto that theme, or does it? No, I, I mean, I, I think it's. I mean, I would argue that engagement is so broad that that's your goal. You want to engage your audience. So I think ways to do that in creative ways. I think things to be thinking about, and Dean's going to do this soon, is there's, there's lots of ways to engage your audience. You can do it with your poster, and, you, and Dean's going to show us good and bad examples. And, and you know, because there's competition, right? There's all these posters, so how do you get people to come to your poster, right? And also, how do you keep them and engage them? And so, you know, it's the, it's the nice, big, clear titles. 
and thinking about the words in the titles. So I think things to maybe be careful of is not to have your title be so deep and specific that, you know, five people <laughs> in the world would understand it. So try and keep your titles broad but informative. I know that's challenging, but that's something I would encourage you to do. Um, and of course, Dean, jump in here. I'll just well. say, you know, one way to really engage somebody is to have a written question. Yeah. I mean, you phrase something in a question, but how to be that way, or an opening statement that draws a person in. Okay. What is the answer? Okay. It gives them the ponder. Okay. And then I think the other thing is to share your enthusiasm for what you do. I'm, I'm sure you guys are all very enthusiastic and passionate about your scholarship, and so to share that with folks. It's, you know, this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, yeah. Then my other question was, uh, what would you, how do you recommend handling it when you're in the middle of explaining your poster to someone and then a few other people walk up the So, you know, each time that's going to be a different uh, strategy. You know, if they come in just 30 seconds after, you can say, you know what, I'd just like to back up and capture this second person and, and engage them as well. If they come in sort of late, you can talk about, well, you know, I've already told so-and-so about this, and, but here's a way I can bring you into the conversation as well. Um, that's, it's, it's a challenge. And, you know, sometimes you nail it, sometimes you don't. So that's why you do these poster sessions. So it, it's a good question. I'm not sure that answered it. As well as I could, but yes. So, yeah. Um, main challenge for me, well, first challenge for me, not main challenge. First challenge for me is producing a post that's visually appealing. You know, not one that just communicates the ideas behind the research, but that's that's not my skill set. And my five-year-old daughter is very willing to help, but her skill set's a little limited. <laughs> um. I mean, something we do in my lab is, in my research group, is, you know, we, we don't always do things in isolation. If you have colleagues who are willing to help you, you can put that colleague on the poster with you. You know, these can be collaborative things. It doesn't have to be you in complete isolation. Um, I mean, I think since you're the, the primary author, you want to be driving everything on your poster, but I think getting a little help is not a bad thing. But then you want to acknowledge that help. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, sure. Um, for anyone who's not super into like using Adobe or Illustrator or that kind of thing, PowerPoint is a great way to make posters too. And it's a lot like you more like user friendly if you're not used to those Adobe programs. If you want to make like a digital poster, PowerPoint's a great way to do it. Just yeah. A suggestion. Some of my graduate students use PowerPoint. Yeah. Of some of the other programs. They turn out really nice, super simple, yeah. concise. Yeah, I would recommend. Uh, pre-printing your poster on a smaller scale first and looking at it. We've once or twice printed big posters and I've been like, oh, there's yeah. a typo in there, or wow, that doesn't look quite right. <laughs> so where, where do we print a poster? Well, you can do it very small scale. We sometimes do it eight and a half by 11 and then you know, we'll even use a magnifying glass or just you know really scan it. But you can also go, so for printing larger posters. I meant the original, uh, the, the, the final. final. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So architecture still has a place, doesn't it, John? Yes, it does. Yep. Yeah, architecture. Dean, where, do you know where else? <coughs> architecture. Architecture. Is, there, is that the only one? It's the only one that I know of. Okay. Large format printers are. Sorry, my students don't do it, and I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. Do you know how long it usually takes for them to print it off? It takes about a half an hour yeah. or so. Depending on how many people are in line. I wouldn't be. They're using it a lot, so you have to go earlier. Yeah. Sometimes if you call or, and you can schedule, probably I imagine, right? But there are times that they won't guarantee it um, sooner than 24 hours at the end of term projects. So end of year really is a, is a crunch time. Yeah. But usually it's going to be within, you know, a, within a two hour period. Yeah. But, but I wouldn't do it in the morning of March 7th. Do you have to bring the material that's going to be printed on, or do they have that? They have material there. It's 42 inch roll, and then your length. Okay. Um, so you can go two feet, three feet, 10 feet, 30 feet. You what? pay by the foot. Yeah, what is it, tile again? Uh, two by three. Two by three. Two by three? Yep. So that would fit within you know, 42 inches, uh, usually on one axis. So you'd have two feet by the 42 inches would cover your poster. How do you suppose to hand out? Oh, yeah, you can have handouts. 
I mean, that's a. I mean, you can have a mini version of your poster, or you know, what I've seen at meetings is um, students and fellows have given me actually copies of papers, manuscripts that they publish that complement the paper. Um, I found that useful. I've also liked the mini version of the poster, so that I have a hard copy of it. But people have done lots of different things with posters. Yeah, that's a nice idea. I also see a lot of people using QR codes nowadays too. Oh right, that you could. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions before I hand this off to Dean? I want to make sure Dean gets sufficient. Okay, I think it's. I think it's okay. the Dean show. All right. Um, I was going to talk mainly about the sort of the visual mechanics of, of posters. And we've already heard two pieces of software that have been used so far, PowerPoint, Adobe Illustrator. Um, those are the two ones that I've used most. Um, PowerPoint is by far the easiest one. If, you need, if you're in a hurry, it'll do the job for you quite quickly. If you want to get much more artistic into something, Adobe Illustrator is wonderful. Um, it would be much better than, say, Adobe um, Photoshop. And the main reason there is that Photoshop has a real hard problem with fonts at times. So Illustrator will give you nice, crisp, sharp fonts. Um, have anyone, has anyone here used other um, software? Yes? What about Adobe InDesign? I have not used that, so I could not answer that question. Is that something that you've used? Or? Yes, but for small scale projects, like brochures, I don't know if anyone's used it for a post. I would, I would recommend Illustrator over InDesign because a lot of times with InDesign you're having to import from Illustrator anyway mm -hmm. to get that format and it is specifically InDesign is usually more for brochures. Mm -hmm. I feel like okay. Illustrator is just more flexible and you can manipulate it better. Yeah. And sometimes people are using something like a, a program called Sigma Plot to actually create a or Excel to create their graph and then port that graph into um, Illustrator or um, PowerPoint. And Megan, you had your hand up. Uh, I've used GIMP before, which is a free piece of software that I highly recommend you do not use. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a great piece of software for photo editing and for image manipulation, but the sizes um, get distorted when you export it, so you have to be really good at manipulating that. So I would not recommend using it because it's kind of a nightmare. We're using that outside of Linux or within a Linux uh, I was using operating that system? Of Linux. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so some of the things I want to talk about would be that. When it comes to books that are out there, um, the Wall Street Journal has a guide on basically how to make graphs and you know appropriate use of fonts. So this is sort of like the style guide for data. That said, I wanted to also talk about when you're trying to be creative in, in the scope of your poster. Not that you always have time for this, but um, there are several people who are out there that are spend a lot of time thinking about how to communicate information with data. Edward Tufte is probably one of the primary people. Secondarily, I would say would be Alberto Cairo um, is the next person, leading person, talking about how to communicate information with data. And then the third person is, is Nathan Miao. Um, so these, I think, are really wonderful books. These two are fairly cheap to get. The Edward Tufte books, even on the used book market, are usually fairly expensive still, because they're quite useful. But these are for getting into really um, intense data graphics, maybe well beyond what you're doing right now. But that said, online, there are some great sources for creating guidelines for creating posters. One here is by um, Colin Perrington, and I have another sheet that has his URL on it, so I'll hand that out here too. Um, but the first thing, I want to do is just get in some, some I, like, I like to be interactive with my audience. And so you all have, a, have tests and things to work on. And so I'm going to handle some things here. This is you know, quite, quite simple. There should be about 30 of these guys. There's a few extra. Yeah. Who doesn't have uh... All right, so the clock is ticking right now. Um, who can pick out 100? Only one of those numbers there is 100. I need to know right this moment which one is 100. Pressure sticky. D is not correct. D. 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 All right, so how? I have 
All right, so the question is, who has, who found it this challenging in a very short time frame? <laughs> Just a few people. Um, and was there anything with font that was a, a problem for you? Is there any, so, anyone want to claim a, a font that you thought was difficult? One that you have, say, because these are all the different fonts. So the, the answer is E. So what did you get? I got time, well, new time drumming, but I was doing that same as time so new Yeah. So time drumming can be a really difficult one, believe it or not, to identify that I versus the L versus the O. Um, so your font choice really can influence your patron or your, your, your viewers or your judges' ability to comprehend your poster, particularly when you are having a mixture of um, numbers and letters in a numerical string. Now that said, there are some fonts here that are probably really easy to tell 100 from, but you know, how many people would say that they had a font that they would never use because it was just a weird looking font? So what do you have over there? OCR extended. Those are extended, so it's an optical character recognition font. It's like the font that you find on the bottom of your checks. Hey, it's great for telling what 100 is, but yeah, it's something you probably would not use. Did you have another one? I thought you asked something different. Okay. I would use this. <laughs> no. So there are, there's one called, I think, uh, Consola, which actually is a fairly nice font, but it helps really identify that zero. Um, but you do have to sort of make that Call, judgment call between where you have a good font versus a bad font kind of thing. Now, I was recently at the, I said four hours. Come on. Postpone. No, you cannot postpone anymore. <laughs> All right. I said postpone of four. All right, so this is going to be a pain. We'll have to use this. It's going to be a pain otherwise. Um, so I was recently at the American Geophysical Union meeting, and, uh, which was in San Francisco, and they have about 10,000 posters that are on display there. And I took pictures of about 1,000 posters and tried to go through and look at what I thought were good examples and bad examples. And so I'm going to show you some of these guys here and have you all critique some of the stuff. Um, <coughs> we're going to the good stuff and bad stuff first, and then I have some neutral things to um, sort of have you sort of evaluate. Uh, we'll have to bring this back up here in a minute. Um, in the meantime, I guess we'll look at, well, how about this? Um, if I was to ask you, what is an important aspect of a poster? Are there, are there qualities of a poster that you want to convey to somebody, or what are the, the parts of a poster that you, that you think of? Uh, we have figures, text, and maybe references. Yeah, figures, text, references, anything, anything else? Okay, and with my, might be a, a title? title. Alright, how about another little abstract or sort of summary? What else might we want to add to a poster to make sure that it was um, coherent for someone looking at it? We want clear headings and divide it up in sections that are pretty easily easily um, moved from one section to the other. To organization. Great. Um, anything else? Questions, maybe? Questions. Awesome. How about yourself? Oh, there's some. Did you have some? Uh, white space. White space. Very good topic. Um, really helps with organization. Did you have multiple skills of emphasis? So you have the headings, and then you might have like a subheading, and then some bolded section. So a tiered level of information, such that the person who is first coming up to your poster can see the overall message. If they have interest, they can dig deeper and see a bit more information. And if they really have interest, they can get really in close and look at everything. Now, there's one item that's still missing. Conclusion, like takeaway or something? Well, conclusion. So there's two items. So I'm thinking of something else. Yes. Images. Images would be good. Who made it? Who made it? That's what I was thinking about, is, is who, who the person is. And so the affiliation. So I'm going to hand out some posters here. And these are ones that. And this is sort of a really important thing. These are, these are real people's posters, so we need to be considerate that people put time and effort into these things. Um, yet, sometimes these things didn't come across as well as probably they should have. So we have to keep in mind that you could be in this position yourself. So we need to be very 
careful about how we critique these things. But these are ones I thought we could really improve upon. And so I want to hand some of these guys out and just show um, some issues that pop up in well, sort of passing these around. Can you help these? There's just a few of these guys in the stage, I think. <coughs> I should have sort of numbered these. But once we've had a chance to sort of pass these around, have everyone see them, um, I'm going to ask for a little bit of feedback on them. Because if there's one primary failure that I've seen, um, let's see, more for up front. You guys don't have any there. So a lot of text, hard to read. Um, how about up here? What are you, what are issues you see with this poster? Well, I don't know about any reality. In reality, it was easy to see, but here it's so dark you can't really read it. In reality, it was not easy to read. In reality, <laughs> this one, because the lighting in each room can be very different. And this was a dark room. This poster, and are we on or off from what the video was? Oh. Okay. Are we on or off? Uh, we'll turn off this first. So, have you had a chance to sort of glance at these guys? Um, now, an important thing is that aesthetics are still quite subjective. What really excites one person may not excite somebody else. So, that is a hard bridge to, um, to really cross at times. Um, you might think this is the best thing, and someone else goes, I really don't like it. That's the way the world is. Um, but that said, if you ask a bunch of people and they differ from you, you might defer to that greater audience because that is uh, the greater audience is who you're trying to interact with. So you might defer your own views um, to the greater audience that comes. Um, what are your feelings in this, the poster here? Is it something, do you like, do you like this better than the ones you've seen? And, well, it seems much more accessible in terms of its organization, and the contrast is really clear. Um, it seems easy to find things. So well organized. Um, does, do you have to basically um, scan the whole page to find out what the title is? So you can, you can look at one point on the poster and say, this is the title. Um, one, another thing to avoid, you really don't want to have titles that go all the way across the screen or your canvas. When that happens, you're forcing the viewer to move their head to read back and forth. Something you don't want them to do. You want them to be able to spot your title without having to move their head. Um, so this was probably my favorite out of this whole series. Um, any comments about some of the other posters that are out there? Um, one in the back corner there. What are your thoughts on this poster? I don't know where to start. I'm not talking about like getting feedback. I mean, mm -hmm. visually, I don't know where to start. Well, I hope this. Do you, do you like it? Is it good or bad? Yeah, so it's just not working for me. Uh -huh. The dominant art is drawing me in too much for me to come away from it. I guess the image is, the image just has me, and I can't get away from it. OK, so. we'll bring this up, too. So this is one that I actually really enjoy, but this is where things differ. Um, so there's a. Um, there's sort of an uh, indication that maybe this could deal with better organization to make this a little bit more easy to navigate. But it also shows you that you can use several different font sizes without having a big problem on uh, what you're doing. And have that there. Um, <coughs> that's another one. What are your thoughts on, on this? Um, well, I mean, you see easily what it's a the, the headline and there's nice nice little sections you can follow along with the numbers but I think the like the the center title is not informative enough mm -hmm. uh, or I mean that I missed, I may just be because I have no idea what it is but so there's another one which is so probably I thought was you know one of the nicer ones that I saw 
I thought it was fairly well organized, um, not as well as the, the one of the arts of exploration, which I thought was you know, really I thought amazing. Um, information is centered here. I thought they used decent margin space to help identify the, um, the blocks. Um, so I'm going to have you all work as a group, and I failed to say that you should probably designate someone who wants to help talk about it, but can I get the three of you to stand up and begin to go through this poster? And so which one do you have? It's this one here. Um, which I should have done into a subsection. All right, so that one I don't, looks like I don't have that set here right now. Where do we have that from? All right, so we're going to, we'll just have to hold that one up. The other one's, yeah. So, all right, so you have a poster. What were the main issues that you found that you had with this, this poster? We're not going to get too much text. So text heavy is an issue. And you see the abstract. The abstract is split into two columns across the entirety of the poster. That's very hard. How about the length of their title? Do they have to scan all the way across to read the length of the title? Um, another thing to think about is that we have the author affiliation there. So we have their names, and then we get a little subscript, or superscript, I should say. Um, that actually can make, I mean, it's nice to have, but you can make that much more subtle than it really needs to I mean, that they have it here. So if you use a superscript, don't accept the superscript for the font you're using, make it even smaller or less dense. Because your affiliation is much less important than knowing who you are, because at your poster, someone is going to try to look at your name on the poster and look for where you are in the audience. So having that name is really important. The affiliation, they can actually probably see through your name badge when they actually start talking to you. Um, anything else? What would you say about the text, the margins of the text on this poster? Um, we noted that there's very minimal. Um, I mean, you can barely tell that there's three columns in this. And um, they actually have like subsections, like section two, and then they have section 2.1, 2.2, and it kind of does this little maze, I guess, in each column. Sure. So there was mention of the use of white space. That is really, really important. Use wide margins. Wide margins will help make it more easily. It is make it more easily read, and it will help with the organization. Um, the failure to use uh, a margin really, really that was the next biggest complaint that I had that I saw um, at the contrast with people who just had a margin right at the edge. All right. Uh, did any other group have any other comments on this? The who had this this poster? Yes. We thought that table was not informative at all. Basically, yeah. I thought like they had a paper and everything that was in that paper <laughs> went to this poster. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so way, way too much information. Yeah. Um, to, I mean, the person who's going to be at your poster is going to be there for maybe 15 minutes. They, I mean, how long does it take to read a research paper? <laughs> can, can you do that in, you know, can you read a research paper well within an hour? Yeah, maybe, you know, but it's going to have an hour of intense study. All right, thank you. Does anyone have a different poster they're willing to look at? Yours is different, I think, right? Yes. I have to pull that one up. I'll probably turn off the camera if you don't mind. <laughs> 